Hi, I'm John. I'm on board Corrick on a fairly miserable grey day. Um, might be a useful opportunity to just talk about autopilots. It's a subject that comes up again and again and again. I thought I'd talk about what we chose, why we chose it, and um, how it's performing for us. I hope you enjoy this video. Well, we're uh, delighted to report that we're now uh, running down towards Cowes, having spent the uh, have spent last night in Newtown Creek, and we'd like to introduce you to the hardest working and the most diligent member of the crew. Not me, not Elizabeth, but George. <laughs> the autopilot wasn't the top priority for me when I first started looking at this. I, I knew I wanted one because I wanted to sail shorthanded, but I was a bit ambivalent as to what we'd get. Uh, doing a little bit of research, it turned out there were um, three main options, uh, which turned into four. Uh, one was the ST2000 from Raymarine, the other one was the Simrad T32, maybe T30, can't remember, um, and the Raymarine um, Evo 100. Um, we also looked at a thing called a Pelagic um, and dismissed that reasonably quickly just because of the issues of getting hold of it. But when we looked at the other two, the ST2000, really not quite strong enough for this. Similarly, there was stories of the Simrad machine just not being up to it. Everybody that um, on the that, that I spoke to seemed really pleased with the uh, Evo 100, and as, as are we. Um, in terms of sighting it, um, obviously the tiller arm goes right beside the tiller. We pilot head, we put on the bridge deck, as you'll see, the actuator in behind the batteries and the flux gate compass itself went right at the back of the engine compartment, indeed beyond the engine compartment bulkhead into what is a little bit of a void space above the um, the rudder there. This is George here. George is the autopilot and we've set it up here and it turns out that was exactly the right place to put it. So that's the brain of the operation and the brawn is, as you will have seen, the tiller arm moving there and it sets up very nicely. So we've got ourselves nicely set up. We're steering in auto. The controls are simplicity itself. Um, I can take it out so it's now no longer working. I can take it in hand. Auto bangs it into auto just there, and it gives me what actual my heading is and what I've ordered. So I've ordered 040. I can take it up or down by a degree, or up and down by 10, which works really well. Um, really useful is that I've got this mode selector where I can select the mode and then select it into wind vane, and that will then steer us according to the apparent wind. Something else to say about George is he will do um, tacking for you, whether under sail or, um, sorry, whether in apparent mode or in um, autopilot, uh, by pressing the plus one and the plus 10 or the minus one and the minus 10 together, it'll put the boat through an appropriate angle. What we've found with that is that under sail, certainly, it really just not quite quick enough and we tend to, uh, tend to do that in hand. But um, in benign conditions, um, then it's just fine. Elizabeth and I have both found George to be massively helpful. Um, if you want to make a cup of tea, he'll take the helm. If we're beating to windward for quite a long time, he takes it and does it r pretty well, actually, it, truth be told. Um, he warns you of wind shifts, which is nice. nice. Yeah. Um, and we can also, it's also integrated with the autopilot, so we could say go to a particular waypoint, although we don't tend to use that mode very often. Um, it carries with it its own risks. But we're really, really delighted with um, the extra hand that it's given us. When we first looked at doing this, we were going to fit something, and I saw it only as useful in and out of harbour. But this version is um, is doing really well. Especially when I um, I'm having to build my confidence with sailing, um, and it is actually quite reassuring. So John can show you what to do, and the auto helm is uh, doing what it needs to do. This little bit of footage was taken when we had between 20 and 25 knots of breeze across the deck, we had the rail under gently, and George handled this really nicely and allowed you to set things up. Um, 
not quite so breezy the next day when we put the kite up, but this is a good example of I was able to trim the kite, keep my hands both on the sheet, uh, turn another hand towards the guy, and then just simply reach across and adjust the heading uh, a few degrees. Um, it really, as I say, it really did feel like three pairs of hands. Try doing this in slightly rougher weather, I guess. But there we go. It's been an absolute godsend over the last couple of days while we've been um, either sailing in reasonably rough weather, it was a breezy old day yesterday, or getting something like the kite up because it just gives you another hand. And I have to say, it's not as quick as a human being, there's no doubt about that, but so long as you plan everything through and do it step by step, it works really well. That was helpful both in terms of what we chose, why we chose it. Um, it, it, it's worked really well for us, I think it's fair to say. It wouldn't be without it. Um, thank you for watching. And of course, it's the height of the British summer, so we put our foul weather gear on.